Hey folks, today we're making a DX7 and Sega Genesis style synth using Raspberry Pi and Minidext. We'll explore the synth, I'll guide you through the build process, and I'll demo the surprisingly powerful capabilities of this tiny cardboard FM synth. Let's get started. Now I'm more of a software guy, but the idea of making physical music devices has always intrigued me. Recently this Floyd Steinberg video came across my feed demonstrating how to run Minidext on a Raspberry Pi. The build looked pretty straightforward and I was able to simplify it even more by removing the rotary encoder, port extender, and breadboard. I highly recommend checking out his walkthrough if you decide to build this project, and as always, links to everything will be in the description. One major new addition since that video came out is the build now comes pre-installed with a ton of awesome sounding performance patches. It makes the whole installation process much easier, and it also just sounds incredible. You can still add your own custom SysX patches, which I'll go over, but those steps are now optional. Minidext is a bare metal Raspberry Pi FM synthesizer that runs eight instances of a DX7 style synth, similar to the TX816 and TX802 rack mount modules. This open source FM synth allows you to load your own SysX presets like the ones used on the DX7 and the Sega Genesis YM2612 chip. In the 80s, the Yamaha DX7 took the world by storm with its FM synthesis, finding its way onto countless hits like Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone, Berlin's Take My Breath Away, and George Michael's Careless Whisper. The TX816 is an expanded version of the DX7 running eight sound modules simultaneously, although it was bulky, expensive, and is often overshadowed by the success of the DX7. Meanwhile at home, the sounds of FM synthesis could be heard on the Sega Genesis with its four operator FM synthesis chip, the YM2612. Online, you can find SysX libraries out there that are comprised of Genesis game instrument patches, and I even made a YM2612 Git repo of some of my favorites. I've made videos where I go over the differences of retro game consoles and how they create their sounds, so check those out if this topic interests you. Fast forward 40 years later, and now we're creating our own budget-friendly version using a Raspberry Pi, Minidext, and a MIDI controller. Here's what all we'll need, a Raspberry Pi, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 3B, but other models will work too, just check the Minidex page for compatibility. Next I'm using this Raspi Audio DAC hat sound card, the audio quality from its headphone jack is way better than the one that's on the Raspberry Pi 3. I also soldered on this 4 pin connector to connect the LCD screen, speaking of which we will also need a I2C LCD screen module. This part is actually optional, but navigating would be limited without it. The I2C version only requires connecting four wires that will be connected to the pins on our Raspi audio board. And additionally, we'll need some wires, a micro SD card, a MIDI controller for playing our instruments, cables for connecting everything, and a box to put it all in. Now let's assemble our cardboard FM synth. First, I'll place the audio hat on our Raspberry Pi and screw it down. Next we'll throw some leftover stickers from our MIDI controller build to decorate the box and to personalize it, I'm adding a Synthwave Escape sticker. You know, some people might think it's shameless self-promotion to put a sticker from your own amazing free mobile game on the box. And here is our finished box. To attach the LCD, I just taped it down and performed one of the world's most soldering jobs. Just don't look at it too closely. Just don't, just don't look at it. Now we can plug everything in. First the LCD into our Raspi audio board, then a USB cable for our MIDI controller, a micro USB for the power, and finally a headphone or speaker cable for our headphones or speaker. Next let's jump over to our computer to install Minidex onto the micro SD. Since Minidex is still in active development, some of these steps might be different depending on when you're seeing this. You can review Minidex's GitHub page for the latest documentation, but these are the steps I use to get everything set up. First, insert the micro SD card into your computer formatted for FAT32. Download the latest release build of Minidex and unzip its contents onto your SD card. In Minidex, the instrument presets are called performances. You can select these from the Minidex main menu screen. These performance files are configured to set any parameter for all eight instrument instances and the effects. Alternatively, if you want to change the individual instrument patches, you do that by changing the voice. You can think of the voice for each instrument as being your typical SysX DEX preset. 
If you just want to play the pre-installed performance patches like the ones from the TX816, then you can skip these next steps. This part will show you how to add your own custom SysX patches. To add these, you'll need to create a folder called SysX with another folder inside called Voice. This is where you can add your DX7 style ROMs and be sure to name your files numbered like this. Here I've added four of the original DX7 ROMs and four custom ROMs that are compilations of my favorite Sega Genesis instruments. Scripting-wise, there are two files we'll be editing, the performance file, which is our initial preset, and the minidex file. In the minidex file, we can configure variables specific to how we wired our build. First, we'll declare our sound device. For the audio hat, it'll be this option. Then, since we're using an I2C LCD, we need to enable it by changing this line of code. And finally, we'll set up our MIDI button navigation rather than using the rotary encoder. This might be different for your device, but on my Arturia MIDI keyboard, I have these pads that send MIDI note messages to MIDI channel 10. This will allow us to navigate the menus all from our MIDI controller. And with that, the installation and configuration process is complete. Now we can insert our micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi, and when we power it on, it should boot straight into Minidext. And there we go. If we've set up everything correctly, then we'll see this screen. To navigate, I'm using the pads on my MIDI controller that we just set up in the Minidex file. You might have to recompile a few times until you get it configured just how you want. Here in the menus, you can change all of the parameters, switch between performance presets, or change between different voices. Now let's hear how our cardboard FM synth sounds. First up, we have our performance presets. <laughs> Up next, we have some classic DX7 ROMs.
And finally, our Sega Genesis style YM2612 patches. So what would I do differently if I had a time machine and I were to build this box again? Well, I love the novelty of using a box, but as you might expect, it's a bit flimsy. That wouldn't be a problem, but I notice it every time that I have to open the box to plug cords in or to change out the micro SD card. While there are more convenient options like using Dext on your computer or AudioKit's King of FM app on iOS, the appeal of Mini Dext is having a physical device outside of your computer for making music. And if it doesn't suit your taste, you can always repurpose your Raspberry Pi as a retro game console, kick back, and play some classic Genesis games. Maybe even throw on some Kenny Loggins while you're at it. And that's it. Special thanks to Floyd Steinberg for the inspiration and making this build more accessible, and to the Minidex contributors for making this cardboard beast possible. Come hang out with me in the comments and let me know what you think about this little tiny cardboard synth thing. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.